Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome everyone to lesson 13 and I think I'm going to do this lesson in two parts. This will be part one and what we'll, we will be doing is uh, I want to show you how you can teach your child how to count perhaps up to 10 objects. We're going to start with just 10 things for counting and, and you'll be giving him some great strategies for counting things. Uh, materials for this lesson. Uh, the first thing we'll need is counters and uh, I have a basket here full of these beautiful conical seashells uh, and I'm also going to use some, st some stones uh, later on in the lesson and you could use also things like coins. Coins are great for for uh, counting exercises. Trading cards, uh, kids love trading cards. And of course, all the things I mentioned are real things. Um, what your child doesn't want to count is an icon of a balloon or a clown face or an apple in a workbook. That's not very exciting. So, you know, try to use uh, real things when you do these counting exercises because you know, all learning, as I've said in the early gifted manual, must be relevant. And these are real things that are worth counting, not icons in a, on a worksheet. Okay, enough of my uh, proselytizing. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what we call touch counting. And teachers call this one-to-one -one correspondence. So I'm going to take my... Uh, shells out of the basket here and they're full of sand they're shedding sand all over the table that's okay all right uh, and of course as you see i've just put them out in kind of a, a random pattern here and uh, it's very difficult to count things when they're just scattered in a random pattern it's very easy for a child to get mixed up like they might start here and go one, two, three, four, five, and then by this time, you know, they're totally lost. They can't remember which ones they've counted. So here is the key strategy that you want to work with when you're teaching your child how to count objects. Watch what I'm going to do here. Let's move them down a little more. And of course, it's obvious I put them in a line. I'm going to maybe spread them out a little more because early on, your child needs all the help he or she can get. Once you do this, once you teach your child how to do this, counting becomes much, much easier. So place the objects in a line. And later on, when we get uh, more than 10, we'll be, we'll be placing them in lines, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So uh, let's just start. I think I have 10 out there now. Let's take a few away. Okay. Because let's, you're just starting this and you want to start out uh, kind of easy with your child. And uh, touch counting, one-to-one -one correspondence is as simple as this. You touch the object, you say the numbers in order, and here's how it works. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. Of course, that's very obvious to uh, an adult. To a child, not so obvious. So what you want her to do, you've just uh, modeled the activity. You would like her to do exactly what you just did. She touches, she counts. She touches, next number. She touches, she says the next number. Touches, says the next number. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, uh, you will probably see early on, they might do something like this. One, two, three, four. They may jump around, they may skip one. They, it might take uh, your child a while, a while to sync up her voice with the actual touch, so be patient. But when it comes to learning how to count, this is definitely the way to go. So uh, do that uh, with your child several times and uh, really get that concept down. And of course, uh, um, you're, you're sort of coordinating it. Exactly when they touch is when they say the number. That's, that's the important thing here. And of course, uh, another concept related to that is the last number she says tells how many you have all together, or you could introduce the word total to his vocabulary now. One, two, three, four, five, six. James, how many shells do we have? And he should be able to say six. Um, and of course, you know, we just counted shells, but you could count things. Let's say I take a couple of shells out of here and put in put in some stones or rocks. Well, we can still count uh, things. It's, so in other words, you know, you just, you, you can count things. You, you, you don't have to count just one type of things. You can count the number of things that are on my table, for example. And once again, as an adult, you may, that may be very obvious to you, but perhaps not so obvious to your child. So, uh, so Mary, how many, how many things do I, do I have here in this line? And she would do this. One, two, three, four. Five, six, you have six things. So that's very important that you do that. And also, it's very important to show children that you can move them around and the order makes no difference. The order makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, you can tell your child, yes, there are still six things, even though I switched them around, um, prove it to me and have her uh, count them out again. So uh, once again, you know, I, I hate to keep belaboring the point, but these things may seem very obvious to you, but to a child, uh, they can be challenging and take a while um, to get. So uh, now let's talk about counting out a specified number of objects. Uh, this is very simple. Here's my basket that I love to use, my favorite basket here, and I've got uh, 10 of these wonderful shells in there. Um, you could say, um, um, Julie, I would like you to count out eight shells for me. And you would want her to do it exactly like this, one at a time. Some kids will like to grab a handful, you wanna discourage that. And as she takes them out and places them down, she says the number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you would say, great, Julie, now why don't you check? How would you check to be sure you had eight out there? And hopefully, Julie would say, oh, I know how to do that. She's going to touch count, one to one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's another important skill uh, for your child to learn. And finally, when it comes to one-to-one -to -one correspondence, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you a way to introduce to your child the concept of zero, which is a very important concept in math. We're gonna, 
uh, I'm going to show you now how to uh, start start on, on learning the totality of the concept of zero. So let me take uh, some of these away here. All right, three shells. And you could say, Freddy, uh, how many uh, shells do we have there? And he may be good enough now where he can just look and say, well, there's three. Or he may have to do this, one, two, three, and you would say, great. And then you would take away a shell, and you would say, how many shells now? And he would say, think, hmm, what's my mom or dad trying to do with me here? <laughs> but he would say, two. You take away another, and you would say, how many shells are left on the table now? And he would say, one. And finally, you would take that one away, and you would look at him and say, well, how many shells are on the table now? And he may look at you with a totally puzzled expression, and he would say, there aren't any. And you could tell him there's a special word for there aren't any or none, and it's zero. And uh, throughout the day, you can uh, remind him about this word. You can make little games up, but you really want to get that name zero and the concept that it's none uh, in his or her head. And uh, some of the funny ways I used to do this as a teacher, uh, I'd just keep it going all day. I'd walk up to uh, a kid in my class and I'd say something like, uh, um, how many elephants are in our classroom right now? And of course, you know, there's no elephants in the classroom. So they would proudly yell out, zero! Or you might say, how many aliens have you met? And hopefully, uh, you know, the child will say zero. And of course, that game can go on and on. And what you're doing is you're, you're cementing this idea of uh, the concept of zero and the name zero into your child's head. All right, that's, uh, that part of the lesson was uh, touch counting. And uh, I'll see you. In lesson, in lesson three, part two, excuse me, lesson 13, part two.